TERP. TERP has long been considered the gold standard surgical treatment for obstructing BPH. Removal of obstructing prostate tissue is done by a resectoscope inserted through the urethra to excise and cauterize the obstructing prostate tissue. A large three-way indwelling catheter with a 30 ml balloon is inserted into the bladder after the procedure to provide hemostasis, remove clots, and to facilitate urinary drainage. This is performed under spinal or general anesthesia and requires three to four days of hospital stay. Implement standard pre-op and post-op care. Monitor for urinary hemorrhage for 24 to 48 hours, indicated by bloody urine, large blood clots, decreased urine output, increased bladder spasms, and signs of hypovolemia. Maintain traction on the three-way indwelling urinary catheter with tubing attached to the patient's inner thigh, using tape or other catheter attachment device, and having the patient to keep and keep and having the patient keep his leg straight. The inflated balloon puts pressure against the operative site to prevent bleeding. Maintain continuous bladder irrigation, often for 24 to 48 hours after the surgery. Client teaching includes explaining that the dribbling of urine or small blood clots after catheter removal is usual and expected. Bladder control can take up to one year. Kegel exercises may be helpful, but must be done only after the catheter is removed and with doctor's advice. Continuous bladder irrigation or CBI. Continuous bladder irrigation or continuous bladder drainage, CBD, uses a three-way urinary catheter with 30 ml balloon post-TERP procedure or when there is hemorrhage in the urinary system. Catheter drainage begins as reddish pink Maintain the flow of irrigating solution to keep urine output light pink. When the drainage gets darker or when the client complains of spasms or when the volume of drainage decreases, open the roller clamp until urine flows more freely and is light red or slightly pink. Monitor and record amount of irritant used each shift. Manually irrigate cloths with sterile saline as soon as possible with at least a 60 ml syringe. Calculate true urine output by, nothing, by noting the entire volume of output for the shift and subtracting the amount of irrigant used during the same period. The amount of fluid um, recovered in the drainage bag must uh, equal the amount of fluid instilled. Over distension of the bladder should be avoided because it can cause secondary hemorrhage by stretching the coagulated blood vessels in the prostatic capsule. The role of the RN, LPN, and UAP. RN starts and discontinues the CBI, gets physician orders for pain medications, etc. Manually irrigates blood clots with sterile saline using a 60 ml syringe, calculates the or evaluates the the true urine output and um, and documents uh, in the intake and output chart. LPN can regulate irrigation once started by the RN. LPNs cannot manually irrigate or calculate the true urine output or get physician's order. The LPNs and UAPs can empty the drainage and note, note it down on the whiteboard to be calculated later, to be calculated and evaluated later by the RN. Prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is unregulated growth of abnormal cells in the prostate gland. Adenocarcinoma is the most common type as high levels of testosterone may play a role. Prostate cancer is the second most common cause of death next to lung cancer. The risk factors include increasing age, above 50 years, familial predisposition, and African-American race, as well as the Western diet. Clinical manifestations. The early stage ha has few or no symptoms. Advanced disease produces urinary obstruction, difficulty and frequency of urination, 
urinary retention, decreased size and force or strain. Blood in urine or semen is seen, painful ejaculation and sexual dysfunction. Prostate cancer spreads to the lymph nodes or to the bone. And therefore, one may experience back pain, hip pain, pathological fractures, weakness, anemia, weight loss, perineal or and rectal discomfort, oliguria, spontaneous patho pathologic fractures. These symptoms may be the first indication of the cancer in many patients when the metastasis has already occurred. Diagnosis is by abnormal findings on the DRE, revealing palpable nodule. The more advanced the lesion, it is stony, hard, and fixed. There's consistently high PSA levels. Truss is used to visualize non-palpable tumors. The confirmation of the prostate cancer is by biopsy and tissue analysis. MRI and CT scan is done to detect metastasis. Treatment may include prostatectomy, radiation therapy, hormonal therapy, or chemo and or chemotherapy. Treatment. Treatment of prostate cancer is determined by patient's life expectancy, symptoms, risk of recurrence, size of tumor, Gleason score, PSA level, likelihood of complications, and patient preference. Gleason score is used to help evaluate the prognosis of men with prostate cancer using samples from a prostate biopsy. The Gleason score ranges from 1 to 5 and describes how much the cancer from a biopsy looks like the healthy tissue, which will get a lower score, or abnormal tissue, which means a higher score. This is done for the primary and the secondary, most predominant pattern. Scores of 8 to 10 indicate high-grade cancer. Radiation therapy includes teletherapy, which is external beam radiation therapy or EBRT, and brachytherapy, which is internal radiation therapy by implanting the radiation seeds. Teletherapy involves radiation of the prostate and pelvic region. Side effects include urinary frequency, radiation-induced cystitis or proctitis, dysuria, rectal urgency, diarrhea, which subsides within four to six weeks. It's advised to, um, advisable to reduce foods that irritate the bowel and bladder, like coffee, alcohol, fatty foods, and heavily spiced foods. Perineal skin irritation may occur, and for this, cleanse the skin and in between the skin folds with mild cleanser and lukewarm water, pad dry, wear loose cotton clothing to help the skin irritation. Fatigue and loss of appetite is seen. Advice small frequent feeds, diet high in proteins and carbohydrates, and daily multivitamins. Late side effects may include rectal proctitis, bleeding and rectal fistula painless hematuria, and chronic interstitial cystitis. Brachytherapy is the internal implant implantation of radioactive iodine-125 to kill the localized cancer cells without excessive harm to the nearby healthy cells and tissues. Side effects include brownish color to the semen for one to two months, the intercourse must be avoided, and childbearing is contraindicated. It is advised to use condoms during intercourse to catch the radioactive seeds. Hormonal strategies. Androgen deprivation therapy or ADT is used to decrease the level of the circulating testosterone. Surgical procedures. Orchiectomy or removal of the surgical removal of the testes is done to decrease the androgen production. Radical prostatectomy may be robotic or open. Open prostatectomy requires stay in a, in a hospital typically for three to five days. It includes removal of the prostate gland, vas deferens, seminal vesicles, and adjacent lymph nodes. TERP, or transurethral resection of the prostate. This is done through an endoscope. It usually requires overnight stay. Risk of urethral structures may need repeated procedures if the tissue grows back. Rarely causes erectile dysfunction, but may trigger retrograde ejaculation. Monitor for hemorrhage. Used for, this procedure is used for BPH, 
can be used as a palliative treatment for cancer with along with radiation and is good for poor surgical risk patients. Suprapubic prostatectomy. This is done through the abdominal incision, requires a shorter stay, open procedure into the bladder, less risk of blood loss, may have a suprapubic catheter post-procedure, which will need aseptic care around the suprapubic tube. Retropubic prostatectomy. This, is, this requires um, an incision uh, in the lower abdomen. The bladder is not entered. It has a shorter recovery. Risk for hemorrhage and infection is common. Anticipate post-urinary leakage for several days after removing the catheter. This is used for large glands high in the pelvis and more common than is more common than the suprapubic but cannot treat associated bladder disease. Perineal prostatectomy. This is done through a perineal incision. This is the preferred approach for obese patients or other when or when other approaches are not possible. There is risk of incontinence. There is risk of sexual dysfunction, risk of rectal injury, risk of injection, permits gravity drainage, low mortality and incidence of shock. Anticipate urinary leakage around the wound for several days after the catheter is removed. This is a preferred uh, model, mode of surgery for radical cancer, radical cancer therapy. Problems and potential complications of uh, the surgeries are hemorrhage and shock, infection, venous thromboembolism, catheter obstruction, complications with catheter removal, urinary incontinence, and sexual dysfunction. The major goals preoperatively include adequate preparation for surgery, reduction of anxiety and pain. The major goals postoperatively include maintenance of fluid volume balance, relief of pain and discomfort, ability to perform self-care activities, and absence of complications. To relieve pain, monitor urinary drainage and keep catheter patent. Assess pain, bladder spasms, cause feelings of pressure and fullness, urgency to void, and bleeding from the urethra around the catheter. Medication and warm compresses or sitz baths are set to relieve, will, re will relieve the spasms. Administer analgesics and antispasmodics as needed. Encourage patient to walk, but avoid sitting for long periods of time. Prevent constipation and irrigate the catheter as prescribed. Interventions to reduce anxiety include being sensitive to potentially embarrassing and culturally charged issues, establishing a professional and trusting relationship, providing privacy, allowing patient to verbalize concerns, provide and reinforce information, provide patient education, including explanations of anatomy and function, diagnostic tests and surgery, and the surgical experience. Rehabilitation and home care. Rehabilitation and home care includes patient and family education for home care, including care of urinary drainage devices and recognition and prevention of complications. Regain bladder continence by giving information that regaining control is a gradual process. The dribbling may continue for up to one year, depending upon the type of surgery. Perineal exercises will be have to be taught, including the Kegel exercises. Avoidance of straining, heavy lifting, long car trips to be avoided um, for at least six to eight weeks. And regarding diet, prevent constipation, include fiber, encourage fluids and um, avoid bladder irritants like coffee, alcohol and spicy foods. Assessment and referral of sexual issues.